Welcome to your Chordal Guitar Lesson of the Week. Today, let's just nerd out on a Pink Floyd chord for 10 minutes. I'm talking about this iconic chord heard in Shine On You, Crazy Diamond. That chord that pierces through your soul every time you hear it. And there is so much to say about just those four unique notes in this chord. But just before we analyze it, we have to contextualize each note of this chord according to the key of the song. And what comes before that chord in the song is just a G minor pad, like this, played on the keyboard. So it's really clear that we have a G, a B flat, and a, and a D, which makes for a G minor chord, and then David Gilmour plays some really intimate, clean solos on the G minor, and then the pad goes to a D minor and to a C minor. So it really reinforces that the key that we are in is G minor because we have the root followed by a 5-4 root chord progression, which is really classic to establish your key. But what happens next is really puzzling because if we analyze the notes of this chord uh, according to our G minor tonality, we have this note, which is the flat third. The other fretted note is the flat seventh, so minor third and minor seventh. The open G is the root. So nothing fancy here. This is all belonging to the key. But then we have this open E string, which is the 13th or a natural sixth. So usually in the key of G minor, we have we have an E flat note, but now we have this open E natural. Super assumed that don't really fit on our G minor key. So now we are asking ourselves, what is happening next? We, it feels like we are not in the G minor key anymore, but we still have that G minor pad really, really slight slightly heard in the background here, and then he reinforces this chord by assuming it 100% with the open natural E. So we don't know what is going to happen. And then we have a little buildup, and we hear this chord again, but now with a bass of C. So now suddenly we have a C dominant seven chord completely assumed right now. So if we have a base of C, all of those notes are recontextualized still. So now this note is the minor seventh, the open G is the fifth, the other fretted note, the F, is now an added eleventh extension, really colorful. And now our open E string is the third of the chord with the, the, the C right here. So now we know what's happening. We are in the key of G minor, but by adding a C dominant seven, we are now in a G Dorian mode. And when you play in G Dorian, and especially that major four chord that you incorporate here, it brightens up a minor scale like never before. So for the first three or four minutes before that point, it was very intimate with small pads, really dark with only minor chords and some, some really, really thoughtful bands like only David Gilmore is capable of doing. And it's really intimate and in a box like this, really, really small. And then just a little bit of build up and bam, that big Dorian chord comes in, it brightens up, everything and it explains why we had a little color outside of our key here. It's because it was foreshadowing of the move that was going to come 
right after it, which for me is genius. Anytime that you can do something very simple that is foreshadowing what is going to come in your song and that's going to add a, a separation or something new in your song or a new element. In our case, this was very intimate and only in minor and very quiet and just one time like this, it brightens up everything, it adds a new color, it adds a new mood to the song, it is powerful, all at the same time, just with one note and one chord. This is genius for me. And then we have to look at how the chord is fretted, right? It's fretted like this, with two fretted notes and two open strings. So the fretted notes are darker and the open strings are brighter. So we have a nice balance here between darker and brighter, which I absolutely love. And even if I play on my neck pickup, it still works really great. And that's why I love all the chords that incorporate, that incorporate open strings and fretted notes at the same time, like this. Or this. If you like the chords that I've just played, you should watch my lesson about dark ambient chords by clicking on the upper card here. You will love all the voicings that we come up with in this lesson. So the fact that he has chosen a voicing like this, I mean, he could have played it in another way. Uh, it could have been played like this. But it would have been all dark, right? Because it's all fretted notes. But by playing it like this, it adds something new. And the fact that he played the order of the notes differently tells us something too. Because most of the times we are used to hear the root of a chord first, especially when we strum chords or we play chords like this. We hear them prominently, right? That's what we hear the most because the bass note is the foundation of the chord. But now Gilmore opts to not play the root chord, which is at the middle as an open string. He opts to play the minor third first, and then the minor seventh, and then the root, and then a note outside of our key. So it really confuses us, like, what is this chord? Where does it belong? If he played the root first, it would have been clearer a little bit, but now it's not. And especially, it's it works better, because if we want to foreshadow the move that is going to come, that we are going to transition in a Dorian brightening, 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 brightening up the chord progression. It's a really good idea to keep that feeling of what is happening here. I'm not sure what is the root anymore. I'm not sure where we are going. So that's a great thing about it. And if you just play those four notes, This is quite an interesting chord because if you want to put some words on the emotion that this chord makes you feel, this is not easy. If I play a chord like this, you can say, okay, the emotions are happy, it lifts up my mood. If I play something like this, You can say sad, introspective, but when you hear something like this, it's not that clear. If I had to put a word on it, maybe I would say mysterious or something like this. But it adds to the ambiguity of the whole mood of playing that chord and assuming it like this. It really adds to it. So I hope that you enjoyed nerding out for me for 10 minutes on this chord. If you like the content that I have made here, subscribe to my channel and turn on the notifications. Each and every week I'm talking about guitar chords, 
pedals, settings, everything about guitar and ambient guitar. So I'm sure if you like this listen, you would like it. So subscribe, turn on the notifications and see you every week on my channel. It was a pleasure. Until next time, au revoir.